If you've met the peacock gudgeon already, you know what a beautiful wee freshwater fish it is. And if not, you're in for a treat. I'm not going to bother describing the colours here because you can see them here and how gorgeous they are. You can almost picture them in a marine tank but they are freshwater fish. They get to about two, two and a half inches at the most and they're just stunning. They tend to spend most of their time at the bottom of a tank. So a tank where you have fish that spend their time at the top will certainly work very well. Something like hatchet fish or something like that, I can imagine making a nice tank. I've just moved mine into a tank with guppies and everybody's getting on absolutely fine. There's no aggression at all, although I could imagine them eating each other's young. That said, the gudgeon do eat their own young anyway, so if you want to try breeding them, there's a particular method that you need to employ. They will appreciate caves and tubes to hang about in anyway. Pleco caves, PVC pipes or rock caves, stuff like that. And what they'll do, the male will encourage the female into your Pleco cave. This is the ones I use. So a bit like the bristle nose, they'll spend a day together laying and fertilising eggs and then the female will leave the male guarding the eggs and fanning cool water over them. So he's a good dad at first, but when they think about hatching, they do tend to eat them. So after about three or four days, you want to move them to an egg tumbler like this and then transfer them to a fry grow out tank once they hatch. They are from soft acidic streams in Papua New Guinea originally and they can tolerate hard water fine although they don't tend to breed in hot water. They will do better in temperatures between mid to high 70s, 76 to 78, somewhere in that zone, and can handle a pH of 6.5 to 7.5 around there. I love their wee stuttering, jerky wee movements that they have, a bit like the keyholes. They dart forward a wee inch or so, stop, have a wee think, <laughs> pod on. It's lovely to watch though, especially if you've got a few of them. They are really inquisitive wee fish. They have a good look at anything you put in your tank and they enjoy having a wee explore around. That includes tank mates. They like to have a good look at each other and other fish, but I mean, I haven't seen any aggression at all. Every now and then you get a wee flare between them. Occasionally they'll dart to each other, showing off a wee bit, but there's nothing in it at all. I've not seen any aggression whatsoever. They seem to be lovely wee guys, lovely placid wee fellas. And ladies, of course. There appears to be three different ways to tell the sexes apart, although two of the ways don't always hold true. For example, females can have a dark edge, a black edge, to their anal and dorsal fins, although you do get some females without it. Also, the females can get a bright yellow belly, so you'll be able to tell by that. And the males, when they are mature enough, get a nuchal hump on their head. A really enlarged head is quite striking and quite obvious, but, like I said, you'll not see that until they're mature, so you'll need to wait for that. There is a fourth way of telling, whereby the anal and dorsal fins of the male protrude across the right way to the tail. The females obviously don't, there's a wee bit of a gap, but it can be tricky to see when they're darting about. Might be easier to take a photo or maybe take some film and pause it, see if you can tail that way. They'll eat anything that you usually feed your tropical fish. Pellet, flake, live, frozen, whatever, and they're good wee eaters. They'll often eat until their belly's full and then, <laughs> and then some more. Obviously, if you're trying to feed fry, you'll be better off with baby brine shrimp and micro worms, stuff like that. For your tank setup, I mean, you could keep a pair in a 10. Be nice to see them in a 20 in a group. And it really should be a well-established, well-cycled tank. Heavily planted, they'll love a planted tank. And like I said, anything with caves and hiding places, they're going to thank you for. Obviously... You don't want any aggressive tank mates and because these guys do stay quite wee, 
nothing that's going to pop them in their mouths. But otherwise, virtually any tropical fish will get on with them, I think. Any peaceful ones, anyway. If you have a dark substrate, a fine gravel or something like that, it's going to bring out their colours a wee bit more. And really, you want to show these colours off. They are so pretty. Honestly, I've not seen a prettier fish, I don't think. Well, not in the freshwater world, anyway. Uh, you may find them labelled as the rainbow goby, but they're not a goby. There is a wee difference in whereby gobies have the ability to hold on to things with their belly, which these guys don't have. So they are peacock gudgeon. And they are fascinating, undemanding, amazing wee fish. I end up just mesmerised by them every time I sit down. So, if you get a group and you get the chance to try them, and I really hope you do, you won't be disappointed.